The British family is a model of nobility and obedience to the law. At least they do everything to create such an image. But there were also misfires when Elizabeth II's relatives broke the law. The Queen of Great Britain herself is not subject to jurisdiction. She cannot break the law and is protected from civil or criminal prosecution. It is believed that the monarch is not capable of bad thoughts and deeds. And with diplomatic immunity, she can theoretically commit a crime almost anywhere in the world and get away with it. In addition, she cannot be questioned by the police and is not required to testify in court. Although the law is not for the queen, since she is the law, the monarch carefully ensures that all her activities are carried out in strict accordance with the law. Other members of her family do not have such privileges, except when they break the law in the presence of the queen. According to the rules, no arrests can be made in the presence of the monarch or in the vicinity of the royal palace, anyone that is used as a residence. When Prince Philip was involved in an accident near the Windsor-Sandringham County residence in Norfolk in 2019, everyone remembered his condition. 97 years old at that time, the Duke of Edinburgh was getting on the highway from a country road and in theory had to give way to a car moving along the main road, but did not notice the car. After impact, Prince Philip escaped with minor fright, but two women from the other car received several injuries. Despite the monarch's guilt in the accident, no arrests were made, and the public decided that the Queen's immunity played a role here. But as the police later commented, when deciding to suspend the case, the main role was played by the level of guilt and the age of the driver. In addition, Philip voluntarily gave up his driver's license, deciding not to get behind the wheel anymore. The Queen's daughter, Princess Anne, was less fortunate. She is the only one of Elizabeth's relatives who has a criminal record. The incident occurred in 2002 when Anna was walking her bull terriers in the park and one of them broke out and attacked two children. There were no serious injuries, but the princess fully admitted her guilt and agreed to the punishment. The court imposed a fine of 500 pounds, reimbursement of court costs in the amount of 148 pounds, and in addition, Anna was ordered to walk bull terriers exclusively on a leash and give them training. By the way, this was not the first time that the Queen's daughter appeared in court. She had previously been accused of serious speeding three times and even had been deprived of her license for a month. Another violator in the family is Prince Charles. By law, the Windsors must not interfere in politics in any way and cannot express their opinions on political issues. But in 2004-2005, Charles sent 27 letters to representatives of the British government where he talked about British legislation, the war in Iraq, and other issues. Their content were kept secret for a long time, but the journals still won. Truth be told, this struggle cost the British taxpayers 400,000 pounds, but for the prince himself, the scandal ended without any harsh consequences. But Prince Andrew surpassed all his relatives in the seriousness of the accusations. A rape lawsuit was filed against him in 2001, when the alleged victim was 17 years old. At first, the Queen's son did not admit guilt and even agreed to a trial, but just a few weeks before giving evidence, he agreed to a pre-trial settlement. According to media reports, the British prince will pay $16 million in compensation, and part of the costs will be borne by the Queen. By the way, she already privately helped her second son to cover the cost of lawyers, which are estimated at several million pounds, and insisted on a peaceful resolution to the issue. Do you think it is right that the monarch cannot be held accountable for crimes? If you like the video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.